Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy, immortal one, have mercy upon us. But you, O Bethlehem of Rapha, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Thanks be God. We light this third candle of Advent, rejoicing in the blessed promise of peace and the salvation given us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Our King and Savior draws near. Oh, come, let us soar again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Word of God. Our first lesson today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall bind up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, we'll read Psalm 126 responsively, breaking at the asterisk. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Those who sowed with tears, those who go out weeping, carrying the seed. 
The epistle reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The brief season of Advent is a time of tugging between what seems urgent and what is important. There's shopping, festive music on the radio, decorations, making homes ready for our guests, our families to visit. They all command our attention and our energy as well. And somewhere on the other side of preparation, there is the call to make ready for the Lord's coming to us. Two faces of Advent are for the church. One in celebrating the coming of Christ as a babe, 
and the other waiting for his return in glory. We want joy in the season, don't we? From all the despair that we know is in the world, we hope for goodwill. We pray for peace in this physical world where there is little peace, only fragments of goodwill between the nations. Hope is darkened by the reality of what we see and what we hear every day. You and I are seeing these things being played out in our own lives and beyond. So we ask the question, is it possible that we can make ready for the Lord's return? Let's be honest. Everybody grins when we have a John the Baptist reading. His preaching does not excite us very much. We know him as a wild man of the desert, one who fed on locusts and dressed in camel hair and came into society with harsh words, words of repentance and scolding to get a different life in order to prepare for the Messiah. But John the Baptist remains a principal character for us in Advent, and he is not wishing us goodwill, but he's raining down judgment upon our heads, says Fleming Rutledge. He wants something much more for us. The church today must recognize that John's words of the first century are current. We must not move too quickly to the manger scene, as beautiful as it is. I love your crash. We know Christmas Eve is coming soon, and we wait for that night when we can sing joy to the world and we can light our candles and sing silent night, and our hearts will be filled. But John came to stir up things, to stir up things in the world and stir the hearts of men and women, his people. Our world is certainly stirred up, isn't it? And we're stressed out about it. The writer of our colic today uses the stir word too. Stir up your mighty power, Lord, and with great might come among us to cheer us, to make merry with us. No. Come among us, Lord, because we are sorely hindered by our sins. Jesus is asking for our full attention in Advent to what is happening around us and in our individual hearts as well. Because God knows, Jesus knew, and John the Baptist knew that sin is always going to distort what can be life-giving. So we need to turn away from the darkness within ourselves and come into the light that is Christ. Henry Nouwen, in his book on Advent and Christmas, says this, the work of our salvation takes place in the midst of a world that continues to shout, scream, and overwhelm us with its claims and promises. Our hope and joy are in Christ's having come to save us and his promise to return. And that is John's bottom line as well. John came to testify to the light, to get people ready to receive the Messiah, the one to bring light into the world of darkness. Each piece of our lectionary this morning attests to what the Lord has done to stir up our hearts anew. We hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, to remember the saving of Israel from exile. Even after her release from captivity, Israel was not without tribulation or persecution. There was still injustice. There was ruin in the city. 
But while in that dreadful condition, there was a promise for the brokenhearted, those who mourn, those oppressed, those with a faint spirit. The promise was one of good news for Israel. Her afflictions would be dealt with by the powerful work of the Lord in his time. The promise remains. Those forsaken will receive blessing. Those in painful circumstances who mourn will be given comfort. Our God who saves will cause righteousness and praise to spring up as in a garden and it will be happening before all nations. Oh, what a day. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? It is incredible, except that that is the word of the Lord which you and I can trust. This is our faith. This is what we believe. It was in God's restoration of his people Israel that they could then rejoice. They remembered the great things that he had done for them, rescuing them from captivity and foreign lands and bringing them home to Zion at last. So we pray for those people who are held captive today, physically and spiritually, and ask God to bring them home to the Savior. Our colic to stir up the hearts to remember is our petition before Jesus to come to us because we are in deep need. We need deliverance because we are hindered by our sins. Spiritual darkness and the world's physical darkness are ever before us this Advent. The brokenhearted and lost who are listless in grief, they need light brought to their souls. The poor who can't pay their bills need encouragement with help. The elderly waiting for a visitor to come want signs of love and caring. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Thessalonians, uses the history of Israel and the present circumstances of waiting for Christ to return to encourage believers. Rejoice, he says. Pray always. Let the Holy Spirit do her work in us. Listen to the prophets and hold fast to what is good. Yes, you and I will concede there is evil around us. We can't ignore it. It's there. It seems to be driving the world in many respects today. But we do not have to hold to that which is against the Lord's will. We hold fast to what is good, what is right, what is just. We hold on to Christ. Hold on to the one who is faithful. Hold on for dear life. Because our hope and our joy today is in having Christ, having come to us to save us and with his promise to return. Hope sprouts from the darkness and the plight of the human heart when Jesus comes to us in prayer and quiet in our faith. Those who trust and believe his words. A short story that many of you probably already know. Twelve days before Christmas, 1945, and near the end of World War II, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a prisoner of Germany wrote these words to his fiancée, Maria von Medmeyer. Bonhoeffer said, Dearest Maria, let us celebrate Christmas. 
Don't entertain any awful imaginings of me in my cell. But remember that Christ frequents prisons too, and he will not pass me by. Bonhoeffer was focused on the one gift of Christmas. A child was born, come to us as God's son to save the world, to redeem her, to bring her back into the fold. Bonhoeffer, who held firmly to Jesus as his savior, was executed just before the end of the war. Never losing faith, standing tall, because he knew who Christ was and that Christ dwelt within him. As John the Baptist confessed, he was not worthy to untie the sandals of his Messiah. God used him to prepare the way for a sinful people to meet the Christ. So it is with us this third Sunday of Advent, no matter how much we invest in preparing for a lovely Christmas celebration, it is the Christ who will bring us forgiveness and grace to receive the gift of life. It is the Christ whose love works and brings light into the broken world. It is Christ who says to you and me, come. You and I are holding out for Jesus' promise to return to us, In the meantime, we need his tremendous grace and mercy to forgive us. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to follow in the way that he has walked. We pray for his Holy Spirit staying power in us through the turmoil of our times. So this is Rejoice Sunday. It is Joy Sunday. God stirs our hearts to remember that he is the one that brings real joy to you and to me, to all of us, his beloved. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, my friends in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith. We believe in one God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, responding after each petition, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, on this third Sunday of Advent, 
We praise you for your love in coming to us, and we rejoice with Christians in our community, diocese, and throughout the world as we anticipate the celebration of the Nativity that we might be filled with hope, joy, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole human family and for the leaders of the nations, that we might learn to live in peace and respect the dignity of every person, and especially for the people of the Ukrainica, Israel, Palestine, and Gaza, and those who seek peace, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, state, and community, and our elected leaders, for our armed forces and their families, let us pray to the Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Audrey, our bishop, and all the congregations of our diocese, for Bishop Andy John Bishop of Bangor and Archbishop of Wales, let us pray to the Lord. For the Bangor Church and all the people of our congregation as we prepare with joy for Christmas, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have lost their faith and those who have fallen away from the worship and fellowship of the church, that this holy season might be a time of renewal and participation, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need or want, or all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, for the victims of violence, prejudice, abuse, and poverty, and for all who come to their relief, let us pray to the Lord. For our children and young people growing up in these challenging times that they might grow in grace, let us pray to the Lord. For all who travel and our loved ones, wherever they may be, let us pray to the Lord. For our loved ones departed, for all who have inspired us, taught us, nurtured us, and witnessed to us, let us pray to the Lord. Please add your own intercessions for those who are in need, those who are sick, those who need someone to comfort them. Lord, make us instruments of your peace, where there is hatred, where there is impure pardon, where there is discord union, where there is doubt of faith, where there is despair of hope, where there is darkness of light, where there is sadness of joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace be with you.
holy times and celebrations in the year, there is nothing more beautiful. So we should be the doers. Hope and love, as Christ loved us, and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice for God.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of terror and error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, the Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace of the Lord.
the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us through the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord help you with his mercy, fill you with zeal for his justice, and protect you with his strength. May God the Father give you the fullness of life. God the Son shield you with his blessing. And God the Spirit fill you with all grace. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit abide with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.